Boys and girls, you may remember this one from last week. This is the earlier Manco hired man we picked up in Southend. Now, that's going to be a winter time job for a complete strip down and restoration. But I just wanted to prove a point that even in this state, just how hardy and I'd say reliable, but it's going to take a little bit of work. It does turn a bit, but it's stiff. But with a bit of a clean up and some oil, I'd be shocked if this doesn't still run without very little work actually needed at all. We have looked up in the dating list on Google and I've come to the conclusion that it's late 1913. The engine number is 115143. And these had apparently been sat where I found them since 1953. So in 70 plus years, let's see just how much effort is required to not restore, but resurrect this one. So we'll start off with giving everything that should move a bit of a spray. I purposely don't want to strip it down and clean it up. I want it to run in this state. Look at the, the dusty rust that's just sat on everything. Magneto, everything's dry, although it is rusty. It is dry and not rotten. So we're just going to give everything a spray and free everything off, including the piston, and see just how little effort is required to get this one running. Now the oiler is missing the needle and the cap so I have had it off already. We will have to take that oiler off and just give it some oil down the hole itself in the cylinder for now until the correct parts for that oiler come along or a replacement oiler. In the meantime, I have got one I could borrow off another engine if I wanted to run it for a longer period of time. A bit of proper oil on there. And as you can see, <laughs> believe it or not, I'd even say that has compression. All these gears are very dry. The magneto, I'm not going to try it with a magneto. I've got an old low tension coil that we can stick in place of that for now. Just so we can rule that out as a problem for starting. And that that is that has got compression for sure. So we've gone round it giving it as much oil as we can on all the moving places valves are free, rockers are free push rods free as you can see trip arm for the igniter the igniter's got an awful lot of wear in it but it is free uh, Magneto's had a bit of oil plenty on the cylinder as you can see all the gears and you can see how freely that turns over and how, com how much compression it's actually got which is amazing so we've set the coil up now not made this the easiest thing to see in the world for anybody that's not done it before but simple low tension coil uh, earth to your battery to the engine like so and then your coil itself just goes in line from the live on your battery through the coil to the post on the igniter and that really is that simple I have earthed the magneto so it doesn't do that any harm uh, I've not cleaned the fuel tank or the carb all I was going to do for this first fire up is my trusty squirty bottle and fill the bottom of the carb until it runs out like so 
So on that note, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and we will go for a start. So here we go, 100% genuine first start since 1953. So what's that? 71 years. Let's see what sort of noises we can get to make. Well, I'm going to guess that means we're going to have to have the igniter out and have a little look at that. So, after a bit of fiddling round, uh, and working out that it's actually the coil that's knackered and not the igniter, you should be able to see that lovely spark. So we'll get it put back in and we'll have another go. Ever so easy on a Manco to get the igniter out. It's literally just two bolts and put the nuts on. Like so. Yeah, I'm well aware that the gasket's not very good in there. And I'll leave the link in the description. We do actually do gasket sets for these on our website and on eBay. But for now, the ones that are in it perfectly fine so we're all back together yeah I know when running it on battery and coil you should change the spring from the right post to the left post so that the points are open as opposed to closed but for this first fire up it's not going to do any harm so let's go for a take two put the igniter down Trip arm down. That was definitely a fire. Kind of proves the theory that it's a goer. Slacken off that governor arm a little bit. And have another go. Oops. Nearly. The theory is proven, and it does run. Just wondering whether... There's a way... Making that latch arm a little bit better, because that didn't seem to want to govern, did it? the governor off any more than it already is on one spring. A bit more oil on the cylinder. Lights back fire. Have we had a 
boys and girls. First one in 21 years. I think that'll do. Very, very happy with that. First run in 71 years. The camera's off. I thought, just check the check valve. See what that was like in there. And to my surprise, that was as clean as a whistle and like new. So, we thought, to hell with it. Put some fuel in the tank. No lid on it, but it was relatively clean. Um, change the spring over on the igniter so that we can run it for a little bit longer without burning out the coil and took the governor spring off and wound the detent arm spring in a little to give it a bit more tension in a hope that we can run it for a little bit longer and a little bit slower so let's have a look and see what it looks like now As you can see, the compression's come up a lot, even with that little bit of running that we've done so far. There we have it. Other than the double hitting, which I'm sure I'll be able to sort out at a later date. And got a little bit of a clunk on the little end. There's not too much room with that. Get it switched off. So, have you got a better story than that? An engine that's been stored away for 71 years and despite the editing, a little less than an hour's work and it's running again after all that time. Let's hear your stories down in the comments. So, on that note, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye.